I'd like to reiterate that if I don't upload for a long time, it doesn't mean the channel is dead, it just means I don't like to force out videos, because I don't have a lot of things to say all the time. But on that subject, I've been wanting to make this particular video for about a week now and just haven't been able to because of family visiting. And the topic that I would like to discuss is my game that has been in the works for forever, which would be Project Comet, which it's been, it's gone under a number of names, but that's the name that people seem to stick to the most, so that's what I'll call it for now. And if you don't know at this point, Project Comet is a game that I've been trying to figure out for about a decade now. It's... I'm not sure exactly how long it's been because the beginning of development has been... it was kind of fuzzy. Um, what I would consider the conception of the project would be whenever it was an entirely different game, but that was kind of the, the beginning of the thought process for it. It used to be more like Cave Story, and now in my head it's more like Paper Mario, but it's still not an RPG, so I don't exactly know how I want to categorize it. But that's one of the problems with it, is that I haven't been able to figure out exactly what the identity of the game is, and that's part of why it's taken so long. But... It's weird because I used to be proud of the idea that this game has taken forever. I used to be proud of the fact that I'd been working on it for years, and even though nothing had really been done with it yet, I was happy to think that whenever it was all done, I would be able to say, Hey, this game was 10 years in the making, or 15 years in the making, and... This is the result, but now I don't feel so proud of that anymore. I actually feel pretty ashamed, because whenever you look at a game like Owlboy, that's a game that was in development for nine years, and after those nine years, it was done. It was a game, it is a game, that you can play for ten hours to reach the end of the story, to have the complete experience. It's, you know, it's a result, and one of the reviews that I saw for Owlboy not long after it came out. Someone said that it had been in the works for nine or ten years, and it shows that it wasn't in development hell. You can see all of the work that went into it over those nine years. It doesn't seem like they just skimped out for months and months or something. I admire that, because my game has been in the works for possibly even longer than Owlboy, and I have nothing to show for it, besides some really short test video clips. And that's pretty much it. I have a whole lot of ideas in my head. It's not that I have a shortage of ideas. And it's not even that I feel like I'm incapable of making the game making the game work from a technical standpoint, because I feel like I can do all the artwork. I can do all the programming. I can do all the music, even. I feel like I can make everything the way that I want it to be by myself from a technical standpoint, but not as much from a mental standpoint. Because I always feel like I'm not doing enough with it. Every time that I return to this project, I feel like it has to be something something bigger or something smaller or something a little different from what it is. And the identity is what's caused it to be so difficult, among other things. I've been asking myself a lot lately why this game is not done if it's been worked on for this long, and for that matter, why is it still barely even started? There's not a minute of gameplay. Not one. And there should be. There should be at least one. There should be an hour or two by now, at least. There should be something. Something to show for it. And I just realized that what have I been doing over the past ten years or so? I've been thinking, well, maybe the game should be done in Flash. Maybe I should veer away from Flash. Maybe that's not the best idea. Should it be a cave story game? Should it be more like Zelda? Should it be a 2D platformer at all? Should it have some RPG elements to it? Should it be more like Conker's Bad Fur Day, with certain kinds of puz puzzly elements to that? Should the story have more fantasy elements or more realistic elements? How should I combine them if I want both? Do I want this to be more of a gameplay-focused game, or do I want it to be more of a story-focused game? And if I want both, how can I combine them in such a way that it's graceful and it doesn't feel like one is impeding on the other? Do I want the game to have a social-political message to it? Do I want it to be more complicated or less complicated? Do I want to focus on the replay value more than other aspects of the game? Do I want it to be a collectathon because I tend to revisit that genre more than others, but then if I have collectathon elements to the game, then will it seem like I'm just putting the story on hold whenever you have to collect stuff? Do I want the game to be longer or shorter? Should I have the art style have a little bit of depth to it, or should I make it all flatter? Should it be colorful? Should it be less colorful? Should I have multiple playable characters, or should there just be one character? And if there's more than one, then how should I switch between them? Should I have Zelda-esque items that you can use in addition to the paintbrush weapon, or would that just make gameplay inefficient? And if I did, then would I have enough buttons to make it work without having there be too many buttons? What would those items even be, and how could I be sure that they're useful everywhere, and not just in very specific locations? 
What I've gathered is that you can't think like this and expect anything to happen. It's not wrong to be ambitious. It's not wrong to be a perfectionist. But there's a point when you have to stop. You have to decide. And I, I don't know if I'm there yet. I remember Lee Unkrich saying in regards to the making of Toy Story 3 that they could have just kept making the movie better and better and better, but there had to be a point when they said it just needs to be finished. Much more recently, someone by the name of KD online, who has a webcomic called Oddity Woods, which I am a fan of, she said in response to a Curious Cat question, which I, f I can't remember anymore if I was the one who asked the question or not, but it was about motivation and getting yourself to work on something. And her advice was, you might have a vision in your head, but what you put on paper or what you put on a screen is never going to be the perfect vision that it is in your head. If anything, it is going to be inspired by what is in your head. You can't expect to replicate it perfectly. Earlier this year, I was feeling really lost about what the purpose of my game even was anymore. I didn't know exactly why I was working on it, and it's not that I even wanted to stop, because I very much wanted to keep going, and I still do, but I didn't know where to continue. I, d I couldn't find any of my inspiration. And Aatrox Shibatsu of Smoking Pencil, he gave me a lot of really good tips about finding my center, finding my artistic core, what really drives me to make anything, not just this, but anything that I've ever made, how can I think about what inspired me to make games in the first place? What is the drive for my continuing to do it? What did, what did I used to have that I don't have now? And that helped a whole lot. I, whenever I finally felt like I found my center, my core, I felt inspiration that I hadn't felt in a very, very long time. However, it still wasn't everything. I recognize that it's one thing to be really inspired, it's another thing entirely to have results. Something that has dawned on me lately, that I feel like is a very important discovery, is that I am very easily overwhelmed whenever I have too much on my mind at once. If I know that there are a whole bunch of school assignments coming up, even if some of them are just way far off and I don't have to think about them for a long time, and even if some of them are really small and would take no time to finish, it's just the fact that there's a number attached to them and that number is kind of big that it kind of makes me freak out and I don't want to do anything. Which is also why I'm recording this right now. I don't want to think about the 60-something sketches that I have to draw before my class in 12 hours. I don't want to think about that. I really don't. And... You know, oftentimes, if I feel like I have too much on my plate, I will just take a big break doing nothing but sitting around playing video games until my mind is not attached to any of it. And then, once I feel like I'm kind of in zen mode, I will start on one thing, focus on that one thing, and whenever it's done, I can move on to the next thing, and that's kind of how I cope with life. That's kind of my justification for procrastinating, I suppose. Seems like whenever I have a relatively small idea for a video or a game or something to that effect, I don't really have many problems starting it and then getting it done without really taking many breaks. And those breaks are not very long. And maybe it's not even so much because they're projects that are very closely inspired by other things. Maybe it has more to do with the fact that they're not really that big and therefore are not overwhelming to me. Maybe it just feels like... They're so much more manageable because I can see the light at the end of the tunnel before I enter the tunnel. So what is my current mentality? I would like for my game to be at least eight hours of gameplay from start to finish, hopefully more, but I'm going to pretend that it's not. I'm going to pretend it's an hour long. I'm going to try to mentally break it into manageable chunks, pretending that the rest does not exist. If you're new to game design and you're looking for advice, a lot of game developers who are really experienced will tell you to start small and work your way onto bigger things. But now I'm thinking, even if you are experienced, you should start small. Ambition is a great thing, but if you think too big, then the small stuff becomes invisible. So if nothing's getting done, downsize. That is something that the professionals do that, as a perfectionist, I have always rejected. I've always thought, why should I wait until the very end of development to polish my game? If it's going to be polished in the end anyway, why can't I just do all that stuff along the way? The answer is results. My favorite games to play are the ones where it feels like I'm always making progress. Why don't I make a game like that? <laughs> After making no progress. 
I say, don't be like me. Stand up for free enterprise. Fight the man. Buy your luxury timepiece, pooch. <laughs>